A major development in the triple killings of Jennifer Hudson's mother, brother, and nephew. Chicago police found a gun in a vacant lot around the corner from where the star's nephew was found dead in an SUV on Monday. The weapon was rushed to the state crime lab for analysis to see if it is indeed the gun used to murder Jennifer Hudson's mother, brother, and seven-year-old nephew, Julian King. My son did not do this. William Balfour, the only man in custody, has refused to take a lie detector test. Can you touch your brother? At 2.13. How did he sound to you? He sounded perfectly fast. Nothing was wrong. Perfectly fast. He did not have anything to do with this. We're still waiting for some of the forensics to come back. I'm extremely confident that this case will be solved. Straight out to Mike Brooks trying to get an answer on the full rap sheet, including juvenile record on William Balfour, person of interest, apparently refusing to take a polygraph tonight. Brooks? It goes all the way back to 12 years old, Nancy. In 1996, he was arrested for uh, possession of marijuana and criminal, criminal trespass to a vehicle. December of uh, uh, 96, also again, possession of marijuana. Again, in December of 97, possession of marijuana. 1999, possession of a stolen vehicle, attempted first-degree murder. And that was the, uh, the vehicular carjacking where he served only, only seven years. And then he was arrested again while on parole, Nancy, in June of 2008 for possession of crack cocaine. And, uh, and now a parole violation for not cooperating with the police. Because apparently, what happened, Nancy, they brought him in. And I can tell you, Jody Weiss, who's the superintendent, former FBI, what they'll do is they'll bring him in. Said, okay, well, let's see, let's go over what happened. And tell us what happened. So he talked to him, and then they'll stop him because it's the same kind of thing I used to use as an investigative tool. Say, well, look, let's clear all this up. Why don't we take a polygraph? And that's when I'm hearing, Nancy, that he decided to stop co co cooperating with police and uh, refuse to take a polygraph and hasn't talked ever since. Back to CNN correspondent Susan Rose just standing by there in Chicago. Would it have been that difficult when I asked you for Balfour's history to give me that history? Instead, you unloaded on the dead victim. Why? Um, I guess because when everybody goes this way, Nancy, I go that way. And come on, those are pretty juvenile. Mar marijuana possession? Come on, the guy was mellow. That doesn't prove anything. And a couple of marijuana possessions, it's I am not impressed with that, Nancy. It's a crime. Yeah, I, I, I know, but well, let's talk about the I'm other possibilities. What, what if it's the wrong guy? Is about, look, I'm not saying it's responsible for this because uh, likely if he were responsible, either A, that have already charged him that have fingerprints off the scene, or right. B, right. or B, they are Sit waiting down. to find out if there's an accomplice, and once they get oh. the accomplice, get them both. So... I don't know what the police thinking right now, but I do know that you hedged on the answer and instead attacked the victim. I don't care what the victim's record is, except that you make a valid point if it is linked in any way to this shooting. If his criminal enterprise somehow uh, is linked right. to the shooting, the only reason I would care about it to Eleanor Dixon is it will help me figure out who the killer is. Way in. Exactly. You want to sometimes look at the victim's criminal record to see who he associates with and maybe some of if he in fact does have a record. But what's interesting about this defendant and the defense attorneys can poo-poo this all they want, but it's an escalating pattern of behavior with him. He starts out with a criminal trespass and some drugs. The next thing you know, it's a carjacking and cocaine. That's pretty bad, Nancy. To Susan Rosen, uh, Susan, I understand that other evidence was also found in the vacant lot, not just the weapon? Uh, the police have small bits, Nancy, but they, they didn't elaborate on what? that. But listen, small bits of you know, what? I, they wouldn't say. And Nancy, this is my point. This guy has been locked up. Balfour's been locked up in custody for six days now. They haven't found anything. They're probably not him in there. I mean, they haven't found that. anything on him. I don't know. They haven't they found anything. They haven't charged him by now. To the whole Odom city and is Herman. pressing them. Let's go to the lawyers. Dixon, Odom, Herman. That doesn't mean anything that there's not a charge yet, Richard Herman. They could be playing with him like a cat and a rat. They violated him for failing to attend an anger management so? uh, order. I mean, that's ridiculous. He was caught Agree, with, but he, so what? He was caught with cocaine, what, a couple years ago, and they didn't violate him for that? No, it was, it's actually in June. They're putting him in the frying pan. They're trying to get a, okay, you know get a confession out of him. They don't Maybe I'm the it. one that's crazy tonight, but my question was... To you, Peter Odom, let me give you a stab at it. Just, you know, just give me a try, all right? Just try. Just because they haven't given a, put a charge on him yet, that doesn't mean anything. Well, the police have announced that they have him as the 
only suspect, the yes. only person in interest. But if they're doing their job, they will be looking at everything, including the gang affiliations of the victim, to look for other suspects. That's what good police officers do. To Eleanor Dixon, um, Eleanor, when you're just a person of interest, you're not formally named a suspect, and you're in custody, don't you still have to have your Miranda rights because you're in custody? Exactly right. If they want to question you about that crime, you have to be read Miranda. But they're making a, these defense attorneys are making a big deal about a parole violation. Nancy, when you're on parole, you've been given a chance. You have to follow the law, and he didn't. Eleanor, I agree with both of you, all three of you. Uh, yeah, it's a second chance. It's a lifeline. But I frankly think that you don't normally revoke just because somebody misses right. an anger management meeting. Plus, the guy called in and went, hey, I'm babysitting, I can't come. They, are, they got him for another reason. You can put money on that. To Bethany Marshall, Dr. Bethany Marshall, psychoanalyst and author of Deal Breakers, weigh in, Bethany. Well, I agree with Eleanor Dixon. This seems to represent an escalating pattern of violence. And what's interesting is there's the earlier carjacking. He speeds down the freeway with a guy on top of the car, attempted murder with a carjacking. And then in the current case, I know he's not a suspect, but there is the taking of a car along with the taking of a life. I think that is a significant pattern. Julia writes in her MySpace that because she made the natural choice to love, this is what happened. It, it raises a question in my mind, what is she talking about? Because she loved her son Julian? Did someone get jealous and do away with him? Did she find a new boyfriend? So whoever she was involved with romantically already become jealous and decide to blow away her family as a form of retaliation. It does really bear the, the markings of a domestic situation more than sort of a gang drug situation and in my mind. And why do you say that? What markings say domestic? Scream domestic. Okay, with domestic, there's usually either financial incentive or jealousy. Well, what's the financial incentive? I mean, who's who's paying child support maybe for this little boy and would have wanted him gone? I mean, with Balfour, he was a stepfather. He wouldn't have been paying child support. I know Balfour um, apparently took Julia's car, according to one support, uh, according to one report. So, you know, he already had what he wanted from her. But jealousy, if she had another boyfriend, that could have been a motivation. With me right now, John Peter Lewis, American Idol finalist, uh, a dear friend of Jennifer Hudson. He toured with Hudson after Idol. Uh, I've got to find out what you learned about her as a person on tour. That's a kind of uh, circumstance where you learn a lot about other people. Uh, she was always really, really sweet to me. You know, I mean, she was sweet to everybody around us. She was really hardworking. Um, you'd always see her in the hallway, you know, working on her stuff and. And, and keep her nose clean. I mean, she was uh, really disciplined, you know, about, uh, about everything that she did. You know, she was very, uh, I mean, just a really conscientious person. I mean, I, I always really admired her and uh, respected her talent, respected who she was. Uh, Isn't it true that she is extremely religious? Very religious, yeah. I mean, I mean all of her background was, was uh, mainly in, in, in church singing, you know, and, and she was a, uh, you know. Do you know, remember you, the first you, time you ever heard her sing? I, yes, I do. I, I remember it was in the Going to Hollywood week. I remember hearing her sing for the first time and just uh, looking back at the guy behind me and thinking, you know, we're in trouble. Yeah, you know? I mean, she was just that good. She was amazing right off the bat. And, and her brother, know. for all the pot shots he's getting tonight, yeah, I know he had a record, but he was there supporting her throughout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he was there uh, the entire time. I mean, uh, you could tell they were close. I mean, because it, from her perspective, I mean, she's always in, I mean, it was within the idol's, uh, uh, control to be able to invite who they wanted to to come to the show, you know, to see them. And so, I mean, she was Jennifer was obviously inviting her brother, you know, every you know every week because he was there every week, you know. And and uh, yeah, it was really it was really nice. How to, long were you, know, you guys on tour together? Well, you know, we were. Let's see, we were on the road for about three months. But I mean, we were in really close quarters, all of us, you know, yeah. uh, for about the, for the better part of a year. You know, I mean, I mean, I was we knew each other a long time, you know, throughout throughout a year. A probationary police officer located a weapon in the vacant lot behind us. The weapon was located in some thick shrubbery and was immediately cordoned off and recovered by the crime lab. That weapon will be sent to the Illinois State Police Crime Lab for further testing.